let's go here and hopefully we can cover all the all the main points. Okay, under here you have hookup for your battery. We do have one battery in there. There is also another spot where you can put another one if you wanted to. And you got a you got your reservoir here for your slide outs. You always want to maintain a, at least three inches of oil in there. Check it when it's in, preferably. <clears throat> okay, you've got your generator set up right here. And on the generator, when you go to start it, first thing you want to do is you want to hit the stop prime button first. So you just push it in, hold it for about 20 seconds. It turns the pump on, pumps gas up into the carburetor so they start a little quicker. And then all you have to do is hit the start switch. And there are two breakers out here for the generator. So if you have no power inside, make sure that the, both these are turned on. Your engine oil is checked right through here. And there's also a drain for the engine oil right here. And it just drains right out the bottom. There's a tube sticking down there for you. So it's pretty easy access for that. And this is fueled by a tank in the back, marked just generator only. There are two fuel tanks on this unit, so one's for generator and one's for the toys. Okay, and then over here, you can store, I don't know, you can probably store a sewer hose in there or whatever you'd like in this little compartment. Up here you got switches for your docking light, the other switches for your landing gear for up and down. have an LP tank on this side and there's also another one over on the other side and there is a switch over valve for the LP tank on the other side. Inside here you've got your big storage area. All the implements up here are one is for your awning, the other one is for your landing gear legs for if for some reason the motor doesn't work you can just, no, that's over on the other side on this one. There is a spot for it and I'm just going to go over here and show you on the other side. <coughs> You can run that handle right here and this would crank up your landing gear up and down if for some reason the motor wasn't working. And while we're here, <coughs> this is your other LP tank of course. Your regulator is up here and you can see the switch over valve. Right now we're pointing to this tank. This is the one that's on. Once it would go empty, this little indicator would just pop up red. Then all you would do is switch your valve over to the other tank. Shut this one off and then go and turn your other tank on. All right, we'll go back to the other side again. <clears throat> okay, and in, in here you've got an outside shower hookup with a quick disconnect for the hose. All you got to do is buy a spray off nozzle for it. Up here you have your hookup for winterizing, so you just put a hose hook to this. Switch your valve over here to the on position, which is the winterize mode. And then you would also switch your water heater to the bypass mode. So when you are winterizing the unit, you're just eliminating the water heater out of the system. And you're just pumping fluid through the rest of the system. It would probably take you five gallons to do this because you gotta, you got to winterize the washer, dryer, washer for sure. So you do run it through a little cycle so that you have antifreeze into the pump on the washer. And down here you have your city water hookup. So you can hook your garden hose right up to that. And you could flip the valve right here and you can fill your fresh water tank through this just by putting it down to the fill mode. Once it's full then put it back up to normal use and then you're ready to go on that. The other valve down here is for a black water tank flush. So you can hook a garden hose right to it, and what you do is you, you flush out the inside of that holding tank. You do that once in a while, especially when it's just sitting on a site, otherwise the tanks don't get too cleaned out, and you want to make sure you've got it flush for older and for sending. Okay, water heater is right here. This is probably a 10 gallon on this. And this is a switch over here for running it on electric. So you, what you would do is you pull the cotter key out, turn the rocker switch on, and that would be running on electric. And for the LP portion of it, you just turn the switch on inside and it would light on LP. This, of course, is your drain for the water heater. So when you go to winterize, just pull the plug out, let her drain right out. Right. And then 
there are instructions on the side of this, so when you go to do this, any kind of any one, any one of the processes, they're all right there for you. So easy to remember. Okay, and on your slide out maintenance, what we want you to do: spray these rails with a WD-40 or JB-80, something like that, just to keep them lubed up. Give them a couple of shots once or once or twice a year at least. For your dump valves, there are four of them on this unit. So you got two up front, and they, they, everything's going to dump out in the same place. So all you do is pull the dump handles, it opens and dumps. And we have two more towards the back, and like I say, they all dump out in the same area. So. And they're, they're marked back here too. You got your gray and your black paint back here for the back washroom. And them handles. Oh, they're both right here. So all you do is pull them out to dump them and then close them. If you are hooked up at a permanent site, when you are hooked up like that, if you're going to use the black tank, make sure you leave the valve shut. Open the valves when it gets to half a tank or so. This way you got the volume of it flushing out that tank. Gray tanks can be just left open. It doesn't make a difference on them. Black ones, you do want to pull them out and then close them when you're done. Right here we've got your fridge. Now this is all maintained from inside. We're turning it on and off. Out here, everything is everything is pretty much normal on these. And once in a while, take an air hose and just blow inside this burner tube. This is where the where the chimney comes down. And after they get a couple years old, the rust starts forming in it and drops down right on top of the burner. So just give it a blast of air once in a while, just to clean it off. And this is either gas or electric, so you can switch it over from one to the other, and I'll show you that when we get inside. Alright. Back here you do have a 50 amp hookup. And there is an adapter up front for the 50 to 30. And then there's also another adapter to go from 30 down to 15. The other valve right here is for your rear black water tank. And the other toilet. So you want to hook to this one and flush out that tank once in a while too. And up here you have your stovetop vent. So when you are using it, you want to move these little ears down so that when you turn the blower on, the fan on inside, this will pop open for you. And your tires and lug nuts have all been checked, of course, but it's a good idea occasionally give them a check. And on these, there is a grease circ in the middle here, so you can just pull out the rubber cap and you can give it a couple of shots of grease once in a while. If it's just setting, you don't have to bother with it too much, just do it once a year just to get some of it. Okay, up here you do have your dryer vent. Down below is your fuel tank for your auxiliary, which is for your, for your pump for filling up your toys. The tank back here is for the generator only, so this we put in five gallons right now so we could so we could check to make sure that the generator was operating over here is for your fuel station so you can turn this on you turn the pump on and then you've got your access right here for your hose for pumping into your toes for getting up on the roof. And this is able to come off. You don't have to use the store here, but it's a good place. It's out of the way for you. I'm going to run up there and just show them the satellite. There's those fantastic vents we put on, covers. And the satellite is right up there between the two air conditioners. Just wanted to show you that. And there's 
also a rug in here. You can put a rug down inside if you wanted to. Down here is your switch for your rear landing gear legs. So you, all you got to do is hit the extend button and it will automatically go down. And it always, always on these jacks, make sure that you're not trying to lift the camper with these. They're just meant to stabilize. If you try to lift the unit, they will buckle up on it. So just be a little cautious with that. This here is just one of the vents for the rear. And there's also another one in the opposite corner just to get cross ventilation for your toy area back here. Under here there is a cable hookup so you do have a lock and stuff so you can lock your toys right to the trailer so nobody can be stealing them on you. <coughs> and you do have an awning back here too. There is a switch just inside. Also for the very back for the patio there is an awning. This one here you do have to crank out. The handle is right up in that front compartment where all the other ones are, so you just put it on there and crank it on the lock. Your other one is electric, you just hit the button and it go. And on these, make sure that you do put the awnings in if you're not going to be around the unit for a while, because if the wind catches them, it gets pretty costly. So just be a little cautious with that portion. <clears> oh, <throat> here you do have a couple of radio speakers, so if you're kind of pissed at the neighbors, you can crank it up. In here, there is a, a, an optional fill for your fresh water tank. You can just put the hose right in here, and that will fill the tank. Let's see, the drain for your fresh water tank, right here. So all you have to do is open the petcock, and you will drain the tank. And you got another awning out here, too. And that is operated the same as the one on the other side there, just with the switch. You have your outside, this is for your furnace, the exhaust doesn't get pretty hot, so just be a little cautious around it. Right here we have a starter bucket for you, so this has another adapter to go from the 30 down to a 15, and this is your other adapter that goes from 50 down to 30. And then there's a sewer hose in here, there's some chemical for, in the, for putting into the holding tank. You have your 25 foot garden hose. And then there's some RV wash and wax soap in the bucket. And it also makes a good wash bucket. And out here you have your central vac system. There are bags, extra bags, right inside this compartment. So all you gotta do is change them once in a while. You do have an outside hookup for the hose also in here. And there's a hookup out here for TV. And here is the handle right here for that rear awning. That just crank, hooks on and cranks it out. And I think that'll cover it pretty much on the outside. And of course, if you have any questions, make sure you call Andy. And I'll direct you preferably, to land. Preferably late at night. Yeah, late at night. <laughs> and if you need service calls, Andy will be the one to call. Yes. <laughs> I need to go to North Dakota. Yes. All right, now we're just going to work our way inside and we'll start checking things out there. Break time. <laughs> okay, now we're going to start on the inside part of the unit. Right down here on the floor, these are levelers. So you, all you have to do is push the button on both of these, and then it just tells you which way you have to go with the camper to get it level. And this does shut off after a few minutes by itself. But it just gives you an idea where you got to go with it to get make, it, make sure everything is set and level. Up here we have your LP detector. Now this will this will go off just like a smoke alarm would. It'll make noise so you know that there is a problem. Over here is your other hookup for your central back system. The attachments for the central back are in underneath this coach right now. I think. They're right down here. And this is your air mattress for the unit. And there also is another air mattress for this bed underneath the compartment too. One of these storage compartments. There is storage on both sides of this. Okay. Back over here now. This is your converter. So this has all your 110 breakers, 
all your 12 volt fuses for your lights, furnace, pump, and all that are all on this side. And on these, if one of these pop, there's a little red LED next to it that just lights up, letting you know that that's the fuse that's out, so you don't have to be pulling each one out separately. <coughs> okay, up here we have your monitor panel. And now on this, you got your water pump switch, so all you have to do is turn it on. Good to go. This is for your water heater to light it on gas. Just turn it on. Once the little red indicator light up here goes out, it just means that the water heater is lit. And they do not they do not recommend running this as you're going down the highway. So wait till you get to the site and turn it on. Up here is your monitor panel just telling you what you have in your holding tanks. So all you gotta do is push the button, it just reads over here. This is for your battery and then your fresh water tank. There's a little bit of water in that because I've been checking things. And then you got your gray tanks and your black tanks all located right here. And here now you got your porch light, interior lights, security lights for outside, patio lights for outside. These are for your speakers for the radio so you can turn them off individually if you want to. Up here is for your slide out control so you just push the one button in comes the slides. Just hold on to the button. Over here is a switch for your for this awning up here, so all you gotta do is extend it here and it just automatically goes out. Just make sure you're hanging onto the button until it gets to the end. And also for coming in, same deal, just push the button, hold it until it comes in. Right here is your switch for starting your generator. So you can start it from inside too just by hitting the stop prime button, hold it for 20 seconds, and then hit the start button. Up here is an hour meter for the generator, just showing you what you, how many hours you've run. A couple of your remotes here, I'm going to stick these in the cabinet this is for the TV and for the stereo. And there probably are more remotes right here is for the other TV in the back area. So all your manuals, all your remotes are going to be right in here. I'm just going to mention to Scott real quick. Scott, I'm going to give this to the driver. This is the direction sheet, but this is all of your paperwork right here. So we're just going to leave it right inside the fridge right there, just so you know. Sorry. Okay, this switch over here is to turn on your satellite up on the roof that they, that they installed for you. You just got to turn the switch on and then put your receiver in. and It'll automatically select your, your stations for you. Alright, anything else we got to cover here? I think that's all just storage. Of course, your big subwoofer speaker down there for your stereo system. And then up here towards the bedroom, you've got all your light switches for your interior. And these, this is your control up here for your furnace and for the AC. So if you want to select heat, you just put it over to heat, gas heat. And then just set your temperature up or down accordingly, and they automatically come on. And this unit also has an electric heat setting. So you can turn that on, and it, what it does is it reverses the pump in the air conditioner and starts heating the unit for you. And you have a switch here for your lights. Can you hear it running? Yes. That's yeah. your electric heat on the air conditioner. Okay, then we'll come in the bathroom here. Nothing too special in here. It is a foot flush, foot flush type toilet. It is porcelain bowls. So all you do on these, you step it, step on it all the way to the floor. It opens and dumps. And then just step lightly on it. Just puts a little more water in the bowl for you. Shower, nothing special in there. Nice looking unit though, it got plenty of room in there. Always make sure that you do latch the door if you're going to travel with it. Got kind of a different kind of sink here, but everything works good. And everything has been pressure tested, so we'll make sure we don't have any leaks in the unit. Okay, and then up in the bedroom, there is some storage underneath the bed. This does lift up and there is storage underneath there for you. Very little, but your pump and your motor and stuff is all under there for the slide, so it kind of takes up a little bit of the room. Closet area, good sized closet for you there too. Make sure the doors are latched though before you head on down the road with the unit so they're not sliding back and forth. 
just a little more closet space in here. Up here is another TV for you. And the little green light that is on right here, that is your antenna boost. This amplifies the antenna up on the ceiling. And it does, it does work for all three of the TVs that are on board. So you just got to turn it on and all of them will work off that same antenna boost. And when you're not using the unit, if it isn't plugged in, you want to turn it off right there. Your antenna is right up here on the ceiling. And these just crank up and once you get to the top, you'll, you'll feel it come to a stop. You can pull down the ring and then you can rotate your antenna to get your best reception for it. And always do make sure that you do put it down before you travel down the road with it. It is just lining up the mark here to the one on the ceiling. That way it will lay flat down on the roof for you. And then up here you do have another AC. This is just strictly AC. There is no heat off of this one. It's just AC only. All your controls are right here for it. Unless you have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we come down here to the fridge. Now the fridge has an auto setting and a, and a gas setting. So if you hit, select auto, this is your 110 power. And if for some reason the power goes out on the unit, it will just automatically switch over to gas and light. And then you can also, if you want, just go over to gas only. And now you can see the two lights that come on, and if this doesn't light on gas only, then these lights will just start flashing, letting you know that it didn't light, or maybe you didn't turn the bottle on or something. But that's just a little safety thing, just showing you that it didn't go. This over here is just a setting for how cold you want to have the fridge. This is a decent sized fridge on these, a good size. Lots of room in them. And then on the fridge also, now if you're not going to use it at all, make sure you do put it in the off position because if you have it in the auto, it's going to go over to gas and keep going until the bottle goes out. Just, just be cautious with that. Your stove top. These, all you have to do on these is to turn the burner on and there is a spark right here to light it. And that only works for the burners. Though the oven you do have to light like most of them underneath. You just turn it to pilot, hold, or turn it to pilot, hold it in. And light it towards the back of the back of the stove here. And your microwave, pretty much like any microwave, nothing too special on them. All right. I guess we can go to the back area here. Go on this. You can see that they have your washer and dryer installed here. And then, of course, you got another TV back here. There's also a radio right here, too, for the back portion here. And then, of course, you got your four beds here. And there is also a table located underneath this so that you can put this in this area here, put it out on the patio portion of it. And to run this up and down, there's a switch. All you have to do is hit the up button. And the first one will come up, and then the next one will go up with it. Ceiling. And then you do pin this, so once it's all the way up, you'll pin the top bunk so that they'll stay in position. <clears throat> Gives you a lot of extra room in here once you run them up. And there also is a vent in the back here too, and you can see it up there right now. And the control for your vent is over here for opening and closing and the speeds of your fan. And there's also a switch down here. Now this is for your other awning that's back here so that you can control in and out just like you would the front. <clears throat> I feel sorry for the one on the top bunk that push this button. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, once it gets to the top, it will stop automatically. And then you have these pins right here. They just go through and lock that bunk up. Get our fingers in there. Huh. Right through here. And there's four of them, one for each side of the bed. And they just hold your bunk up. 
the safety for travel purposes. There's also a rug inside here for you for to make it like a living room for you if you wanted to. And that has been fabric protected too, so it'll keep a lot of the dirt off for you. Well, thanks, Scott. Len thanks you, and I thank you, and I hope you enjoy your new home in North Dakota and keep pumping oil so we can keep selling motorhomes and campers. <laughs> thank you, sir. If you have any questions, call me, and I will get it, your question to Len. Thank you, <laughs> and thank you, Len. <laughs> have a good day, Scott.